Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Targeted killings of minorities continue unabated in Jammu and Kashmir. ISI backs in decade pumping fake Indian currency notes. And India at UN cautious over misuse of biological weapons. Let's start the show with India's Jammu and Kashmir, where the situation is tense. The region has been witnessing a spate of terrorist attacks against the minority community over the past few weeks. In the latest, park-backed terrorists targeted a government school teacher, Rajni Bala, on her way to work. After the killing of Rajni Bala, Kashmiri Hindus blocked highways in Kulgam and Srinagar, shouted anti-Pakistan slogans and demanded justice. A report. Terrorism has ensnared the valley once again. There have been targeted killings, forbidden fear and justifiable anger. Kashmiri Hindus are once again getting swapped into the horror times of the 90s. On 31st May, the valley witnessed yet another targeted killing in a long list of recent attacks directed at innocent civilians of the minority community. This time, the victim is Rajni Bala, an innocent school teacher who was posted in the Gopalpura area of Kulgam district. Terrorists fired upon her on her way to work and injured her so brutally that when she was taken to the hospital, the doctors declared her dead. सुबह मैंने जब ड्रॉप किया ना इनको टाइम पे तो उसके बाद मैं आ गया अब फिर पीछे से मुझे फोन आता है मेरी हेड मास्टर्स को फोन आता है कि ऐसे ऐसे बात है अब क्या फोन आया उसको उसने मुझे बताया नहीं उसने कहा रायकुमार अपनी गाड़ी निकालो फटाफट मेरी गुड़िया बीमार हो गई उसने कहा मुझे मैंने फटाफट गाड़ी निकाली गाड़ी भी दूर ही लगती है वहाँ दरिया पार करके उसके मैंने फटाफट गाड़ी को टर्न किया बैठे तीन चार टीचर बैठ के सारे चार मैं ने भगा गाड़ी को मैंने भगाया गाड़ी को हॉस्पिटल पहुंचे तो उसने कहा चाबी हमें दे तू जा तेरी बाइक को गोली लग गई है मेरी पाँव से जमीन निकल गई अब जे बात सुनी मैंने The episodes of targeted killings of Kashmiri Hindus spiked after April 2022. when Balakrishnan, an innocent shopkeeper, was shot by terrorists near his home in the Shopia district. Just two weeks after this incident, terrorists in the Kulgam district fired upon a civilian named Satish Kumar Singh. He was immediately shifted to the hospital for treatment where he succumbed to his injuries. Recently, on May 12, Rahul Bhatt, a government employee, was gunned down by terrorists inside the Tehsil office in the Chadura town in central's Kashmir Budgaon district. As per Jammu and Kashmir police reports, park-backed terrorists have targeted 16 civilians in Kashmir in 2022. They have become frustrated and changed their strategy and are now targeting unarmed policemen and innocent civilians of the minority community. There is a desperate attempt by Pakistan to create an atmosphere of fear and terror among the people that would hinder the economy and progress in the state. Experts believe that Pakistan is intentionally pushing terrorists into the Kashmir Valley with an aim to keep the Kashmir Valley on the boil. Anger is sweeping through the Kashmir Valley where hundreds of Kashmiri Hindus, mournful and dry, blocked highways in Kulgam and Srinagar, shouted anti-terrorist slogans and demanded justice. अध्यापक थी चाबा से जिनका निर्भम हत्या आतंकवादियों द्वारा घाटी में की गई है उसके विरोध में किया गया है और ये हम राष्ट्रपति लोग बताना चाहते हैं चेताना चाहते हैं पाकिस्तान को कि हम लोग राष्ट्रपति लोग कश्मीर से कभी वापस नहीं आटेंगे एक कदम पीछे नहीं आटेंगे कश्मीर हमारा है वहाँ है रहेगा और आतंकवादियों के जो ये नपुंसक इरादे हैं इनको कभी नहीं पनपने देंगे Kashmir was witnessing the return of peace once again and people had understood that terrorism and separatism cannot flourish in Jammu and Kashmir. This is the biggest pain for Pakistan which has been trying to internationalize the Kashmir issue over 7 decades. 
It wants to reinstate fear in the minds of common Kashmiri people that to get killed, one not needs to be an influential person. Being from a minority community is sufficient enough. Their tactics are kill one and scare a thousand. This is how they succeeded in hounding the entire population of Kashmiri pundits from their roots of more than 5,000 years engraved on the soil of the valley. However, such barbaric terror acts will not succeed in undermining Jammu and Kashmir's development journey as people in Kashmir will not let this conspiracy succeed. Pakistan's notorious intelligence agency ISI had been running the fake Indian currency racket for several years from Karachi. It changed its strategy due to growing international pressure and is now using citizens of Bangladesh and Nepal for such activities. But the key concern is the startling fact that Pakistan-based crime syndicates have copied the most exclusive security features of Indian currency notes, a feat not possible without the connivance of the state machinery. The annual report of the Reserve Bank of India shows a sharp increase in the detection of counterfeit notes, indicating a spike in the smuggling of counterfeit currency. Recent recoveries of fake notes in Bangladesh have exposed Pakistan's intelligence agency ISI of its involvement in running the network for pumping fake notes inside Indian borders. Investigation in the recent cases confirms the years-old mode of operation. Fake Indian currency notes is printed in Pakistan and then illicitly imported into India, either directly through the border with Nepal and Bangladesh or through other routes linking Dubai, Bangkok, Hong Kong and Colombo. The fake currency note racket as far as India is concerned, is very directly attributable to Pakistan and its cross-border financing tactics. And this has been established, and it is not only from now, it has been going on for a very, very long time. And we know that all the terror groups, smuggling activities, extremist groups, radicalization activities, all these are grossly funded uh, through the uh, currency uh, notes which are fake and printed uh, in Pakistan. It is an industry and it is an industry with a motive, with a purpose to undermine the economy and create disquiet and terror and extremism in India. ISI backed fake Indian currency notes network received global attention in 2011. In 2011, the International Narcotics Control Strategy Report of the U.S. State Department confirmed the flow of counterfeit currency produced in Pakistan to India and that terrorist and criminal networks used this money to finance their activities in the country. In November 2021, Dhaka police arrested two Bangladeshi nationals for smuggling fake Indian currency notes and recovered a consignment worth 7.34 crores. Using its base in Bangladesh, the network was smuggling fake currencies into India. Another such incident came to light in February 2022, when Dhaka police seized some gunny bags filled with a large quantity of fake Indian notes and arrested some people suspected to have been involved in the racket. Upon investigation, it was found that the arrested individuals were a part of a transnational syndicate being guided and handled by Park ISI and operating in at least seven countries, including Bangladesh, India, Nepal, Sri Lanka, and UAE. A special cell of Delhi police unraveled the Pakistani links in the smuggling of high quality fake Indian currency notes. The ongoing investigation has upset the Indian security establishment. The key concern is the startling fact that Pakistan based crime syndicates have copied the most exclusive security features of 2,000 Indian currency notes, a feat not possible without the connivance of the state machinery. For the first time, the notes seized by Special Cell prove that optical variable ink used by India in printing 2,000 notes has also been used by the Pakistan operatives. According to sources, 
high-tech optical variable ink is used in the new series of fake notes reportedly being printed at Pakistan Security Press in Malir Halt, Karachi. Over time, they have also mastered the, uh, the kind of watermark, the kind of security features that are introduced in the notes. And uh, there is, it's, it's a full-fledged business model. But with terror in, 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 uh, embedded in it, and therefore the dimension of it is far more dangerous and needs to be defeated. But it's a, a challenge for the security agencies to keep track because they have rackets across the border and in India and elsewhere, and the people don't realize uh, until it is caught. Till six months back, fake notes printed in Pakistan covered only watermark, portrait of Mahatma Gandhi, Ashoka pillars, and common security features. The latest fake currency notes have all the high-tech security features. Although there has been excellent cooperation between security agencies of the two countries to check the influx of fake Indian currency notes into India, security agencies have to take various other steps in order to eradicate this menace. Moving on. Ever since India began its journey as an elected non-permanent member of the United Nations Security Council for a two-year term in January 2021, the country has been raising its voice against the acts of terrorism at the global level. Recently, India urged the United Nations Security Council to remain cognizant of the dangers of weapons of mass destruction falling into the hands of terrorist groups. A report. India continues its strong and focused commitment to help UN member states build capacity to prevent and counter terrorism. Along with such huge monetary contribution in the fight against terrorism, New Delhi is always very vocal about this global threat. Recently, at the open consultations of the UN Security Council 1540 Committee on the Proliferation of Nuclear, chemical and biological weapons, India cautioned over the heightened threat of misuse of biological agents and chemicals as weapons against the backdrop of the COVID-19 pandemic. This threat of terrorists acquiring weapons of mass destruction is no longer in the theoretical realm, as further indicated in the reports of the UN investigative agency in Iraq. The findings reveal that a terrorist group with considerable territory under its control can develop and deploy these deadly weapons within a short period of time. This is deeply disturbing. Therefore, preventing terrorist groups from acquiring and using weapons of mass destruction must be an urgent priority and responsibility of the international community. In this regard, we encourage all participants in the open consultations to focus on this critical threat during this uh, meeting in the next three days. A number of countries in the world are working on the development and production of weapons of mass destruction. They can kill and eliminate large number of people in a short time or cause great damage to human-made and natural structures or the biosphere. There remains a grave danger that several well-established and well-funded parked-back terror organizations like Al-Qaeda, Taliban and the ISS have now gained access to these weapons and materials and methods of their formation. Recent reports of the UN investigative team have revealed that a terrorist group with considerable territory under its control can develop and deploy these deadly weapons within a short period of time. At the UN Security Council, India highlighted the dangers that access of weapons of mass destruction to terrorist groups could entail to international peace and security. India reiterated that a key area that needs the focus of the international community is the rapid evolution of the proliferation risks. 
New Delhi also highlighted that the growing capabilities of terrorists and other non-state groups to access delivery systems like missiles and unmanned aerial systems have compounded the risks of terrorism. Another key area that needs the focus of the international community is the rapid evolution of proliferation risks. Under Secretary General Nakamitsu elucidated the challenges posed by the new and emerging technologies which may increase the risk of WMD access by terrorist groups and other non-state actors. Their growing capability to access delivery systems like missiles and uncrewed aerial systems have compounded the risk of use of WMDs. Similarly, in the COVID era, the threat of weaponization of the biological agents and chemicals has only heightened. The open consultations would be a useful forum to deliberate these issues and explore how the committee can assist member states in this critical area. For several years, India has been itself battling terrorism with great determination. Terrorism is a global phenomena whose destructive potential and lethal reach is enhanced by linkages to illicit trafficking in drugs and small arms and international money laundering operations. Domestic measures alone cannot deal with terrorism as long as some countries continue to provide safe havens for terrorists. Therefore, to be effective, the fight against terrorism must be long-term, sustained and global. It must tackle not just the perpetrators of the act, but also those who sponsor them. After the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan, terrorist groups enjoy greater freedom in Afghanistan than at any time in recent history. And there are no signs that the Taliban leadership has taken steps to limit the activities of foreign terrorists in the war-torn country. This has been claimed by UN Report, which also states that since 2021, Pakistan-based terror groups Jaish e Mohammed and Lashkar e Taiba have been maintaining training camps in the war-torn country. A report. Afghanistan once again has become a hotbed of terrorism, providing sanctuary for terrorists. Taliban's takeover of Afghanistan in August of last year has increased the presence of anti-India terror groups in the country. According to a recent UNSC report, Pakistan-based terror groups are maintaining their training camps in some provinces of Afghanistan, and some of them are directly under the Taliban's control. Jaish Muhammad and the Lashkar-e Taiba, led by 2611 Mumbai terror attacks mastermind Hafiz Said, still have hundreds of terrorists who are using Afghan soil to create unrest in neighboring countries. The 13th report of the analytical support and sanctions monitoring team claims that Jaish Muhammad maintains eight training camps in Nangarhar, three of which are directly under Taliban control. Specifically, the report said Jaish Muhammad has appointed Kari Ramzan as the new head of the grouping in Afghanistan. The terror group was founded by Masood Azhar, who was listed as an international terrorist in 2019 after the Pulwama terror attack in India. This is hardly surprising. I mean, after all, if you have taken the help of uh, Pakistan to come to power, uh, Pakistan provided you sanctuary for two long decades, enabled your strategizing, enabled you to take over that particular country, then as a pleasing quid pro quo, you also have to help uh, terrorist groups supported by Pakistan. The second part is a distinct, uh, different part. Uh, it's basically, have terrorist groups been energized by the takeover of the Taliban of Afghanistan? The answer is yes. Not only Taliban is providing a safe haven to Pakistan-based terrorist groups, but the report by the UN also claimed that the Taliban's takeover of Afghanistan has put 9-11 planners back in the terror cockpit. The report said that the core Al-Qaeda continues to operate with impunity in Afghanistan since August 2021 in the eastern region from Zabul province towards Kunar and along with the border with Pakistan. Al-Qaeda has used the Taliban's takeover to attract new recruits and funding and its affiliates worldwide. The Taliban's victory in Afghanistan 
has not only provided the space for openly organizing the training camps, but has also inspired terrorist organizations of various hues. Besides Al-Qaeda, Lashkar-e Taiba, Jaish-e-Muhammad, and the Islamic State of Khurasan, East Turkestan Islamic Movement has also become active in Afghanistan. All of these indicate that while the Taliban assurances for not letting the terrorists operate from its soil have remained on paper, the Taliban administration is helping them. Why should the Taliban be interested in uh, controlling uh, terrorists? After all, they took a lot of help from a lot of people, other terrorist groups to come to power. Having come to power with their help, they are not likely to turn around and uh, take action on these people immediately. Uh, you could also pose the question whether they are actually able to do so or not. And it is quite likely that in many areas of Afghanistan, they won't be able to do so. The difference between the current Taliban and the Taliban that existed in the 90s is, this is not a very centralized Taliban. Here, there are factions within the Taliban. Each uh, province has a different kind of a Taliban, where uh, people who are at the top positions in prov one province do not know people in the other provinces. So under those circumstances, it is so decentralized, you can say it is so compartmentalized. It is extremely difficult to find out whether the Taliban leadership actually knows what is going on inside, their part, inside Afghanistan. Though the Taliban have continued to insist publicly that there are no foreign terrorists in Afghanistan, the member states are clear that many fought alongside the Taliban in 2021. India has been utilizing all the international forums to point out the fears of Afghanistan becoming the epicenter of terrorism. Recently, New Delhi at the Regional Security Dialogue on Afghanistan has stressed the need to enhance the capability of the war-torn country to counter terrorism and terror groups that pose a threat to regional peace and security. The time has come for the international community to decide on how to bring about a permanent ceasefire and an immediate cessation of violence in Afghanistan. Anything short of this will constitute a serious threat to regional peace and security. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.